the reason why um, we can't just cancel, uh, say, this day and this day, yeah. right, is because that day is actually operating on something, right? In the same way that you can't cancel, right? I can't cancel the signs, right, and say, oh, it's just X on 30 degrees. That sign is inextricably linked to the X, and that's why I kind of said, look, you got D on DX, but it doesn't really, it can't really hang on its own. There has to be something there, right? It operates on something. And it's the same with this one, right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, this D is really attached to this Y. The D squared is attached to the Y, right? So just like I can't go bam, bam, right? Because it's like that would be meaningless. That's really, that's really a hole. Those are whole things, okay? So therefore, yeah, that's why the D's don't simply cancel, okay? So, question at the back. Okay, Jinsu? Why did brackets do DX? Why not DX? Why, 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 why not this? Is that what you're asking? Yeah? Ah, uh, because mathematicians are lazy. That's what it really should be. Honestly, that's what it really should be. Um, because otherwise, you know, when you, if I say this, right? <clears throat> it really isn't clear whether I mean this or this, uh, right? Um, in fact, honestly, if I, if I saw that and I didn't know that this convention has been used, I would assume this, that's what I would assume, okay? But this convention is just so completely taken over and mathematicians are so averse to writing those brackets because it looks so much nicer like that. They just say, well, everyone knows what we're talking about, right? And so they kind of cheat a little bit, yeah. Um, this might be slightly relevant, but you know in an exam when it says negative x squared, is that negative of x squared or, or negative x whole thing squared? When you see this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now this is the perfect example of why actually dx squared just by itself is, is not a good notation because when I see this, right, what I'm saying is the x gets squared first, and then, right? you, put an and then, and then you slap a minus sign on the front. The Had I wanted the negative to be squared as well, I would have so put the negative in there and then square it. Okay. So there'll always be a bracket if the negative. Correct. Now this is a very special case. It, like I said, it's a bit awkward. I kind of wish they hadn't done it like this because th these are two different rules. I hate that when you have two different. That's what mathematics is supposed to be about. That you have a consistent set of rules. Um, I, I suppose, however, I'll, I'll we'll let this one pass because number one, it just it gets you so much. Right? That in this field, it's like, well, there's no ambiguity, really. People are not differentiating with regard to x squared. You can, but that's just weird. Right? And secondly, it sort of fits in this category. Remember I was talking about sign and um, that kind of thing? We, we all know what this means, right? Except why do we use that notation when what we really mean is this? The sign is not getting squared at all. It's the whole thing. You can't just square the sign. Well... It's used so frequently, we're kind of happy to just introduce this kind of like slightly weird notation um, because we're all comfortable with using it, okay? So it's sort of a concession to convenience in some ways. Okay, any questions on that? Yeah, no? Let's really quickly do an example, though in some ways, I mean, we, we don't really need to do an example because the only thing is really this. You just differentiate again, that's all you're doing. Did you want to interject? Um. That's even worse though, because then you're squaring the sign bit, which is like what it looks like with the d squared y. It looks like that, even though you're not squaring the whole dy. Correct. That's exactly right. So that's why yeah, that it's like, so uh, you know, that is not helpful in like notation. Um, and just wait until we get to motion, and I have um, yet another way of describing each of these. But I guess what happens is it's a bit like language. It's a bit like a word like say, um, gentleman. Right? The word gentleman used to actually have a meaning. It used to mean that you were a person who had um, owned a certain amount of real estate, like an actual number, like I don't know, some number of acres, and you, your house had a coat of arms. That's what it meant. Right? But then it sort of started saying, oh, well, people who are gentlemen, they kind of act in a certain way because they're kind of they're quite respectable and like because of all that money they've had an education and so on. So then it started to become, become like, you know, are you acting like a gentleman? It's like, yeah, I have the land and I have the coat of arms, but I'm a bit of a jerk. So we say, you're not a gentleman, right? And then as that sort of way of language kind of grew, the word gentleman has no meaning now, right? It's, it's like, a, I, I say gentleman to anyone, right? Uh, and it's kind of like this, like language, language kind of just transforms and does that. Um, though it is worth saying, like, all of this notation for derivatives, right? Um, Isaac Newton is uh, widely regarded as like the founder of calculus. He wasn't. Um, do you remember I told you about another guy, right? He started with an L, remember what his name was? Leibniz, right? Now Leibniz, 
Leibniz is not the famous guy, because Isaac Newton is famous for everything, right? But Leibniz's notation is the one that we use, because it was it's better, it's objectively better, right? You can do better mathematics with his than with Newton's, right? So kind of, even though sometimes you get these awkward, ah, not quite consistent, the wonderful thing about a collective endeavor is that the best language tends to win, even if it's slightly inconsistent. Yeah. So, so can we blame Newton for the weird notation? Like the notation that's really confusing. Just no, it's no, because he didn't make it up. Stop being me. <laughs> He's older he wasn't that bad a guy, right? He just yeah. <laughs> okay. Really, really quickly, an example. Though it'll, it'll be quite trivial. Right. Example. Well, it's why you learn to steal other people's ideas. Okay, this is so simple, right? This is so simple because in a sense, at least at the moment, right? The only thing you need to get to the second derivative is just, well, just, just go again, just differentiate again, and you are very good at differentiating, right? So this, by the way, um, accents why I keep on saying, you know, you've got to say what you're talking about. Like, I'm going to do the first derivative and I've got to say, I'm working out the first derivative now and I'm going to use notation that indicates that rather than just say equals and start doing things, okay? So, first derivative, what's going to happen? We're going to differentiate once. That's it. Done. You happy with that? That was not complicated, right? I've worked out the first derivative and then I just differentiate again. Right? Which in this case is... Okay, great. So, like I said, nothing to it. Question, right? What does this have to do with this? That's an open question I'm just going to leave for you to think about. I want to point out as well that the degree, as we're working with polynomials, the degree as you go down each derivative, it just drops by one. You notice that? Because that's what happens when you... Um, when you went from 4 to 3, and then 3 to 2, okay? So each subsequent derivative, at least when you're dealing with polynomials, will, have a, will be a lower order polynomial, will have a smaller degree by 1.